mankind has been looking up to the stars for countless millennia. Then, as now, Earth's inhabitants have been driven by a pressing question. Are we alone? In step with the groundbreaking discoveries made in the course of modern research, the thesis that our home planet is the only celestial body in the universe that is home to living beings is becoming increasingly shaky. A sensational new observation on the part of the experts makes Saturn's moon Enceladus one of the hottest candidates for existence of extraterrestrial life forms. What the experts found on the ring planet's constant companion and which unbelievable circumstance was derived from it, you'll find out now in the following video. Do you want more exciting videos on the topic of the universe? Then don't forget to subscribe to Simply Space to learn more about fascinating interstellar spectacles. If you like the content of our videos, feel free to show us with a thumbs up. The Ice Moon Enceladus, Dimensions, Surface Shape, and Properties The iconic ringed planet Saturn orbits the Sun at a distance of about 870 million miles. The gas planet, which with its own diameter of about 75,000 miles is the second largest planet in our solar system, enjoys the company of countless galactic companions. We currently know that Saturn is orbited by at least 82 moons. One of the most exciting and mysterious of Saturn's satellites has always been the icy moon Enceladus. We have known of the existence of this natural satellite, which has an equatorial diameter of 300 miles, since 1789. Why Enceladus is always at the center of scientific interest becomes clear when we take a look at its fascinating surface structure. The outer surface of the celestial body is covered by a dense layer of ice. The surface, however, adorned with countless craters, faults, and indentations, has a radiant quality in the truest sense of the word. Because the purity of the corresponding water ice is incomparably high, Enceladus has the highest albedo in the entire solar system. The unit of measurement albedo indicates how high the reflectivity of the non-self-illuminating surface is. In the case of Saturn's small moon, 99% of the sun's rays are reflected back into space. In combination with the moon's position far from the sun, this also gives rise to the bone-chillingly cold surface temperatures on Enceladus. On average, the thermometer here does not rise above about negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit. In the past, experts realized that part of the moon's surface must be relatively young. The reason for this is apparently the fact that Saturn's moon has geological activity. Specifically, distinctive cryovolcanism causes gigantic water fountains on the surface of the moon. Enceladus is the smallest known celestial body in our planetary system on which geological processes of this kind could be observed. Breathtaking Processes on Saturn's Moon The knowledge we now have about Saturn's constant companion is due not least to the research mission of the unmanned Cassini space probe. The NASA spacecraft took a closer look at Enceladus in spring 2005 during several flybys. Cassini was soon able to prove that the satellite has a thin atmosphere of water vapor. What feeds the moon's surrounding protective shell is apparently located on Enceladus itself. The potential origins of the atmosphere could be in the cryovolcanoes mentioned above or geysers. To the astonishment of the scientists, an area was found at the south pole of the celestial body, which represents a kind of local warming source. Which interactions caused this volcanic activity has yet to be fathomed. Particularly striking, however, is the fact that the geologically active areas on Enceladus are characterized by huge fissure systems running parallel to each other. The corresponding depressions reach up to 100 feet in depth and extend over a distance of hundreds of miles. It's possible that the ice masses near the lunar surface move in convection currents, ultimately creating the amazing crevice activity. Enceladus's Subsurface Ocean The discoveries recorded on the surface of the icy moon, however, are not the only findings that keep scientists spellbound. 
Those formations that are currently still beyond the direct view of experts are among the most exciting fields of research on Saturn's satellite, with the help of gravimetric measurements, in the course of which the gravitational field of Enceladus was analyzed. Experts found clear indications that an ocean of unimagined dimensions could be slumbering beneath the gigantic surface ice layer of the Moon. The steady release of ice particles and water vapor could be detected in a rift valley system in the south polar region of the Moon. Later, it became clear that the influence of dozens of geysers was responsible for this spectacle and even affects Saturn's magnetic field. Since the distances between the geysers are relatively small, at a maximum of 22 miles, it was quickly assumed that the natural formations are most likely supplied by one and the same subglacial water reservoir. At first, Experts assumed that this was a localized source of water. However, later investigations revealed that the subterranean water on Enceladus is by no means a relatively small collection of liquid water, but a huge ocean that extends over practically the entire surface of the icy moon. Specifically, the subsurface ocean ensures that the thick layer of ice on the surface of the satellite is separated from the underlying rocky core. This thesis is supported by the fact that the rotation of the Moon is subject to regular fluctuations, which are much stronger than in celestial bodies where the rock core and the outer ice shells adhere to each other. The presence of water in a permanently liquid form is considered one of the basic building blocks for the development of life. So is it possible that basic microorganisms could have already formed on Enceladus? The groundbreaking answer to this question is probably yes. Is there life on Saturn's moon? The impetus for this sensational hypothesis is provided by the chemical nature of the enormous fountains that are regularly ejected from Enceladus's geysers onto the moon's outer surface. Accordingly, not only ice particles and water vapor, but also methane could be detected in these emissions. In order to get to the bottom of the formation of methane, researchers carried out a large-scale statistical analysis, which came to a breathtaking conclusion. Tiny microbes are probably the cause of the methane contained in the fountains. Scientists have long suspected that hot springs exist at the bottom of the subterranean lunar ocean, in whose immediate vicinity life-friendly conditions prevail. Since these sources cannot draw their energy from sunlight due to their remote location, other chemical causes must be responsible for the existence of the natural formations. By the way, comparable objects can also be found on our home planet. There are certain hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the deep sea, called black smokers among experts. Quite a few experts consider it possible that the black smokers once played a significant role in the development of terrestrial life. For example, the bacteria that thrive near hydrothermal vents are still considered to be the most representative early life forms on our planet, from which all other living things may have evolved. In fact, the microbes have an anaerobic metabolism that does not require oxygen. At the same time, the bacteria generate energy without sunlight flooding their natural habitat. This terrestrial circumstance, in turn, caught scientists' attention when they wondered whether such a development might not also be possible on Saturn's moon Enceladus. For this reason, they took a close look at the revealing data Cassini had collected as part of an extensive investigation. During its mission, which lasted until 2017, the unmanned spacecraft actually flew through the geyser fountains, which are sometimes ejected thousands of miles into space. In the process, Cassini succeeded in recording and analyzing in detail the exact composition of these natural ejections. The unusually high amounts of methane detected in the fountains cannot be explained solely by the non-biological processes at the bottom of the subglacial water ocean. This circumstance, in turn, led the experts to the conclusion that the bottom of the subterranean sea must be adorned by hydrothermal vents. If one follows the thesis that the emergence of terrestrial life forms was not an improbable, lucky coincidence, the conclusion is obvious that also in the life-friendly areas of the hot springs, microbes developed, which represent at the same time the origin for methane occurrence. As is well known, however, it takes immense periods of time before life forms can develop. Experts agree, however, that the life-favorable circumstances on Enceladus have already prevailed for some billions of years. The appropriate organisms would have therefore had sufficient time to develop. As groundbreaking as the thesis about the existence of life forms on Enceladus seems to be, it is still vulnerable at the moment because, 
Although the life-friendly conditions near the hot springs and the methane in the geyser fountains provide strong evidence for this hypothesis, they do not constitute definitive proof. It's also theoretically possible that the methane originates from another, as yet unknown source. We look anxiously into the future, awaiting the new information experts might hopefully attain regarding this topic. What do you think about the stunning discoveries on Enceladus? Write us your thoughts, opinions, and feedback in the comments. Feel free to take a look at other exciting videos, which you can now access by clicking on one of the thumbnails in the credits. Thanks a lot for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.